We're getting ready to blow your mind a little bit. What if we do 20.00 times 5.00? What's the answer? The answer is 100, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 20 times 5 is 100. How many sig figs do we have? Uh, here we have 4, and here we have 2. Mr. Dixon has the right answer. You have to have 2 sig figs in my answer, right? The only way to write it is 1.0 times 10 to the second. God. <laughs> Brad said so. And he's right. Because how many does this number have right now? Right now it has how many? Three. It has one. one. If I put a decimal right here, how many does it have? Three. So I can't do that. I can't write it like this. I have to put it scientific notation. Okay. Has to be 1.0 times 10 to the second. Mm -hmm. Report your answer. The same number is one with the least number of sig figs. Okay? Multiplying and dividing is easy compared to adding and subtracting. Alright, we got six minutes left to do adding and subtracting. Oh, great. And it's harder. And it's harder. Alright. Now, when we add and subtract, it's not how many you have, it's where they're located. Okay? So let's try. We'll start off easy, like we did, and we'll work up. So if we do 5.4 plus 0 0.3, what's the answer? 5.7. No, it's right. <laughs> That's 5.7. Now, some of you might, according to rules for multiplying and dividing, we would have said, well, there's two here and one here, we can only report one, right? Well, those rules don't apply now. We don't need to worry about that because we're adding and subtracting. So that's only when you're multiplying? That's only when you're multiplying and dividing. Now we're adding and subtracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box in my last sig fig on each one number. The, the sig figure is the furthest to the right, and the one that's the furthest left tells me where I can be at. I'm going to show you some more examples. So just suffice to say that this is where I can have a significant digit at. Let's do an extreme example to show you the difference. What if I had 5.4? Okay, let's circle the last sig fig on each one. This is significant, right? Yeah. Are these zeros significant? No. no. So this is. So that tells me the furthest left is going to tell me where I have to round to. So my answer, when I do it on my calculator, gives me 101, right? Mm -hmm. I can't have anything that's significant to the right of this digit right here. This must be my last significant digit. So the true final answer here is 100. Uh-oh. Are we okay? No. No? So you lost me when you went over to the far left from the one. Because the one is significant. These zeros aren't significant. I'm going to look for the one that's the furthest left, and that tells me where I have to round to. Okay? This is like saying that you have a bucket. Not a bucket. You have a... I don't know. i got to think of a good example. You have a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, full of water, and you add one drop. Is that drop significant? No. No. That's what this is saying. What's the rule that the you round to the furthest left? The one's furthest left. Furthest left? Yeah. So if it would have been 1 plus 99, 
are 100 plus 99. Yes, or what? If it's 99 plus 1, the 9 and the 1, so the answer now is 100. Right? Right. And I want to make this zero significant. How can I make that zero significant? I could write scientific notation or I could just do like that. Why is that? It's because here, I know that zero is good. I know there's a measurement made there. Down here, there was no measurements made here, so these numbers over here are kind of iffy. Okay? It makes sense. Sort of. Sort of, it does. Okay. It's just hard to kind of grasp it. You gotta do it a few times to get it to sink in, I think, okay? Yeah, I'm confused because I'm picturing a hundred with a decimal point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing a hundred with a four side of zero. Do what? I'm confused because I thought you went by decimal points, but on the one hundred up there, I'm seeing the imaginary decimal point pass to the right side of the. Right zero. here's no imaginary. Right here, there's no imaginary. There's no decimal point there. We don't have imaginary decimal points in here. No, we don't. We don't do that. There's no decimal here. This means this is exactly 100. This is where my error is. This tells me my error is way over here. See the difference? This error is in the 100th place. Here it's in the 1's place. Okay? That's the importance here. One more real quick example, and then we'll go. All the way this way, right? Well, let's look and see. Ones, ones, hundreds, hundreds. So in this case, what do we have? This one's the furthest left. So what do we got? We're happy. Okay. All right, on Monday, <laughs> we'll do some more adding subtracting. We'll, we'll do a couple more times of adding subtracting, then we'll stop with that, okay? We'll pick up there.